In cooperation with PCBWay, a professional manufacturer of circuit boards, I had created a demo board for a programmable double H bridge as shown in a previous video. Anyone who has ever designed and soldered an electronic circuit will agree that there's always something to improve once you have the board in operation. The motor driver demo board I developed is no exception from that rule. After implementing the improvements into my design, I received an answer from PCBWay to also provide me with version 1.3 of the board, free of charge. I would like to show the fundamental differences between the two versions in the following. In unfavor cases, a voltage higher than 5V can drop at the resistor implemented as a current sensor. Another resistor and a Zener diode ensure that no more than 5V is passed to the pin of the microcontroller under all conditions. Only provisionally implemented in version 1.0 of the board... ...the components are now properly placed in the new board design. Next, I swapped two of the control pins to the H bridges to make programming the microcontroller easier. This was implemented on the fly in version 1.0 with two extra wires... ...which no longer have to be soldered in version 1.3. For the mini voltmeters, I didn't implement any tracks on the circuit board. But while I had to drill the openings for the cables by myself on the old board... ...they were milled out by the manufacturer in the new version. If needed, even more complex shaped openings can be milled by PCBWay. I had more holes milled to be able to attach a base to the circuit board. In version 1.0, I only had 4 feet glued on. The solder mask, which greatly simplifies the soldering of the components with its smooth, dirt repellent surface, does not make gluing these feet a permanent solution. With the holes for screwing the base, there is no longer any risk of it coming loose. The Arduino Uno board, which is required for programming the motor driver, now has a permanent place on the underside of the board. Four more holes were needed for this. The pins used as control inputs for the dual H bridge have also received upgrades. LEDs now indicate whether a high or a low signal is present. Furthermore, resistors and Zener diodes ensure that no voltages higher than 5V are forwarded to the microcontroller. Five volt logic levels can now be output via seven push buttons. This allows input signals to be simulated at the H bridge. A capacitor resistor combination is attached to each of these buttons to suppress contact bounds. In order to be able to measure voltages at critical points in the circuit, several pins have been implemented in the design. I used the option of having any graphics and lettering printed by PCBWay more intensively. The functional groups of components are now marked by lines and labels, which is useful for understanding the circuit. A graphic with the circuit diagram of the core element of the motor driver also contributes to this. It is not only possible to print on the front... ...but also on the back of the circuit board. As one tends to confuse left and right with the front side when turning the circuit board around, the additional labeling, especially on the pins of the microcontroller, is very helpful. Instructions for populating the circuit board can also be printed here, which should make the assembly even more error-free. Again, I uploaded the design files to the PCBWay online shop... ...and 
and received the manufactured circuit boards after a few days. Due to the advantages of a professional circuit board mentioned in this video, the assembly is very quick and I can now work on the videos on how different motor drivers work. These will be published on my second project, Homo Faciens. There are high resolution photos of this board on how open is this gadget to give you an impression of the manufacturing quality achieved by PCBWay. Thanks for watching and I'll be back!